Welcome to Coco's 2D Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Euland. For more information, go to bobeuland.com slash Cocos2D. In this tutorial, we will explore the magic of node spaces. Let me first say something about UIKit space. In one of the previous tutorials, we saw that the UIKit space had its x-axis pointing up and its y-axis pointing to the right. How come? That's because UIKit thinks that our iPhone is in the portrait orientation and UIKit always puts the origin in the upper left corner, x-axis pointing to the right and the y-axis pointing down. When we use the method convert to GL, we converted the UIKit space to OpenGL space, or world space as it is also called, where the origin is in the lower left corner, x-axis pointing right and the y-axis pointing up. And this method convert to GL will always put the origin in the lower left corner, no matter if our iPhone is in the portrait or landscape orientation. It just does the right thing. Let's now look at the two rules of node spaces. The first rule says, if the parent node moves, rotates or scales, then the children nodes do so as well. And the other rule says, if a node moves, scales or rotates, it doesn't affect the points or texture rect expressed in the node space itself. What does this mean? Let's begin with the second rule. Here we have our layer, whose origin is in the lower left corner. Let's add a sprite to the layer using the addChild method. The sprite becomes the child of the layer and the layer becomes the parent of the sprite. The rectangle that contains the sprite is called a bounding box with respect to the parent node. That bounding box has in our example an origin 200, 100, that is this point, and it has a width and a height. But this sprite is also a node, so it has its own space called the node space. And in this space the rectangle is called texture rect. It has coordinates 0, 0, this point, and the width and the height are the same as that of the bounding box. But what happens if we transform the sprite, for instance move, rotate and scale? Now there is no bounding box, because the rect around the sprite is no longer a rectangle in the world space. Why not? Because by definition a rectangle in iOS has to be parallel to the axis, and this rectangle is not parallel to the axis of the world space. But in node space coordinates, the texture rect is still a rectangle. Suppose that we want to detect if the user touches a point inside our sprite. We do that by checking that the point is inside the rectangle. We can use the node space because there is a rectangle to check against, our texture rect. But we can't use the world space since there is no bounding box. So you see that the concept of node space can be very useful. The other rule is easier to explain. If the parent node moves, rotates or scales, then the children nodes do so as well. Let's say that this first sprite is a child of the layer. 
but this second sprite is not the child of the layer, but is instead the child of the first sprite. Now if we move, rotate and scale the first sprite, the second sprite will follow along automatically, without us doing anything with it. Let's now go to Xcode. We are inside Xcode. In our resources we have two images, sam.png and hat.png. In Hello World layer we are enabling our layer for touches. In CC touches we are getting a touch, getting the touch location in UIKit space, converting it to OpenGL world space, and logging that location in the console. Let's see how that works. When we click somewhere, we get the location in world space. In the lower left corner we have low values, and we get high values in the upper right corner. Let's now create a sprite. We'll create Sam, CC sprite, call it Sam, use Sam.png, let's give him a position, for instance 200-100, make him a child of our layer, self add child Sam. Build and run to make sure it works. OK. As we said earlier, this was world space. Let's now introduce node space. For that we need Sam. In order to access him we need to give Sam a tag when we create him. Any number will do. Let's say 77. We can now access Sam by sending a message to the parent self get child by tag and our tag was 77. Now when you use this method get child by tag it will give you back a node. But we are expecting a CC sprite here. So we need a simple cast in order to avoid getting a warning. So we add CC sprite like this. Now we want this location converted to the node space. So we use lock equals sam convert to node space and the point was lock. Now we just copy the logging to distinguish them let's call this world and this node. Let's test If we touch, we see the coordinates in the world space and also in the node space. Let's go back and check if the touched location is within the rect of the sprite. We know our node, so we know the texture rect. 
and we have the touched location in node space so we should be able to do it if CG rect contains a point and the rect is Sam's texture rect and the point was lock and statement we just log inside else log outside let's see if this works we click inside it says inside if we click outside it says outside it works let's now transform Sam we will move scale and rotate him okay let's build and run now the question is if the inside outside check still works inside outside if we come very near and click inside or outside it still works thanks to our node space let's go back and add a head sprite CC sprite hat hat.png let's give the hat a position of 100 100 and let's first make it a child of the layer self add child hat Build and run. You see that the hat is not affected but what happens to Sam. Go back and change self to Sam. Now our hat's parent is Sam. Build and run. And now you see that the hat goes through the same transformation as its parent node, Sam. Thank you for watching.